the time to watch. I appreciate it. Welcome to our workshop, Polyventure. Uh, this is a workshop that's about uh, political science and games. So we explore how games relate to concepts in political science. Uh, and I'll be live streaming different games like Catan Universe or Risk or Civilizations, uh, Civilization and discussing how different elements of the game relate to political science. So these uh, workshops, as you know, are live streamed on Twitch on Wednesdays from 730 to 8. So thanks for taking the time. Uh, this is our schedule for the fall semester. Uh, last week we discussed the seven concepts, so you're welcome to watch the recording. Uh, today we'll be talking about communication, direct and indirect, and then in the subsequent weeks we'll talk about the uh, six other uh, different concepts that we're uh, engaged with, so a total of seven. Now just a quick recap from <coughs> week one was a discussion about these seven concepts. Uh, communication, information, strategy, moves, network, probability, and signals. And I went into some detail about, you know, what can the values of these concepts be? How do we operationalize them? And then as we go along in these weeks, I'll be adding the real life application uh, as an example. So let's go ahead and jump in week two. And this is about communication. So uh, thanks for taking the time to uh, dig into this topic. Our learning objectives with this workshop are the following. First is to define communication. Secondly is to explain how communication occurs in a game. And then lastly, explain how communication occurs with a real life political example. So recall these seven different concepts. And what's uh, unique about them is that they basically help us to understand not only our personal lives or our communal lives, but uh, also our political lives. And it can even extend these to other concepts like business or uh, nonprofit world or international relations. So um, in, uh, in teaching political science to students and introducing them to the range of concepts that are available, uh, these are the seven that I like to focus on. Uh, and I may be expanding them later on in uh, future semesters, future years. But um, in, in the past few years, as I've been teaching, I think these help to crystallize in some ways uh, what's um, our core to uh, thinking about the world and thinking about our political world. So what is communication? Well, recall that uh, communication can take on two values, either direct or indirect. And examples of that could be talking to another player, like in a game, or uh, indirectly talking to another player through yet another player. Uh, in real life, we can think about direct communication as um, you know, you raising your hand in the classroom and uh, asking the teacher a question. That would be a form of direct communication. Uh, indirect communication uh, would be things like asking a friend in the classroom to ask the professor a question. Uh, because you're not doing it directly, but you're hoping uh, that the person that you've uh, brought up the issue to, that they'll do it uh, on your behalf. And so it's basically a very clear line uh, from one side uh, to the other, or you kind of do it in a roundabout way. And one way of uh, visualizing this is pretty straightforward. Like we have direct, <laughs> right? Point A to point B, straight line, shortest distance. Uh, or we have indirect, which is you kind of take a roundabout way to get to where you're trying to go. Um, and what we'll do is we'll demonstrate this by looking at the game of Risk. So I got uh, the game Risk set up here. Let me just uh, open it. And I'm going to turn on the sound a little bit. I put him on mute because it was a little loud. But I'll play it, have it play subtly in the background for us. And I'll obviously have some sound effects just so that we got that going. So here we're set up. Uh, this is the the risk um, interface, and you can have obviously single player or pass and play, global domination, or play with friends. So I'm gonna go ahead and try the global domination because I want to play with other people uh, and see what we can uh, do to to have this kind of conversation. So uh, it looks like this uh, is being set up. We're waiting for a couple other players, and it looks like we're ready to go. So it's asking me to get ready. <laughs> which means having my juice box or in this case a cup of water because my uh, son drank our last juice box of Capri Suns, <laughs> which are delicious, by the way. Uh, it's going ahead and validating us. And it says it looks like not enough folks wanted to play, so we're going to have to wait for the next round to get set up. Uh, let's see how this goes for us. Uh, hopefully it gets going. This is always one of those challenges when you're wanting to play a game, kind of waiting for more people to get in uh, get involved and participate I'm going to have it auto match us <coughs> okay it looks like my colors changed a bit which is fine with me and I'm ready so hopefully we don't have another drop 
but we'll see right now. Okay. All right, here we go. So General Sato is the first to go. I don't see an icon for him. And they're drafting, which means they're pulling their cards uh, to decide uh, what they can then uh, see if they have any special cards to put down extra troops, but they'll put down their troops as they go. So he's first. Looks like I'm in the second queue. And then we have this fella here and then this other fella. Um, and right now I don't have any cards because it hasn't been my turn. You'll see this little progress bar on the top. You know, you should notice my mouse. So this fella has some time to decide. And it looks like he's placed his troops here in East Africa and he's going into the Middle East. And now it looks like he's going from the Middle East to waiting, waiting. And so he's fortifying his troops, which means he's probably either keeping them in the Middle East or retreating them back to some other part. And now it's my turn. So I, I have three troops for occupying 11 territories. I like to always use the Australia strategy just because it's interesting and fun. So I'm going to drop all five of them in here. <coughs> and then I can go ahead and next. And I'm going to go ahead and attack from here to Western Australia to Indonesia. All right. Excellent. And I'm going to go ahead and go from Indonesia to New Guinea. I'll take all my troops with me. And go to New Guinea. Now, I just want to stop here for a second because I have a little bit of time. And note that this is a form of direct communication, right? So I'm going uh, to one of my neighbors in this case, and I'm going to conquer his territory. And so uh, this uh, red player here, he knows that, right? <laughs> like, oh, this guy is 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 communicating with me in a negative way, and uh, he's now developing his opinion, his view of who I am and how I'm playing. So in this case, I was able to remove his troops. We're done. I'd like to fortify. I'll go ahead and move some troops over here to back it up. I get a territory card. And now it's uh, uh, King Jamin's uh, turn. Now, as King Jamin is talking, I'm going to go ahead and use the little chat feature here. And I'm going to put a little tongue out. Right? Now, you might say, is that a direct or indirect form of communication? Well, that's a uh, direct form of communication. But the question is, to who? Right? Now, since I didn't have an interaction with the gray player, number one, um, he might not interpret that as me communicating with him. Now, because I just had an interaction with player red, he might have seen that tongue face and say, Hey, I think that guy's sticking out his tongue at me. And he knows that I took over two of his territories. So now he's remembering, Oh, look at, look at how he treated me. Maybe he's making fun of me. Now, I don't know what, uh, red players thinking unless he uses the, the chat box or the chat function. Now, as we're waiting here for Red to decide how to move, I'm gonna go ahead and click on Gray, and I'm gonna see if I can send him a message. Uh, right now, it's Angry Leper Concern, so he's there. And I'm gonna reach out to General Satan and be like, hey, do you wanna make an alliance? So I put out my request, and uh, we'll see what happens. And he says, I will accept your request. We are allies now. So now we're on a team, right? How strong that allyship is, who knows? We'll find out in a couple rounds. Uh, but now we've developed that alliance. <clears throat> the question is, how long will it last? <laughs> and the other question is, uh, does red player know and does uh, a white player know? Uh, and I don't know how this looks on the other side of it. So, like, I don't know how it looks from the interface of, uh, of, of gray player or red player or white player. Uh, but I'm figuring that they should see, be able to see our alliance. But let's imagine a world where there's two world. Uh, imagine two examples. So they can see that we have an alliance, right? So now red and white, in theory, should want to form an alliance because they're like, hey, if they're teaming up, we should team up. Now, if they can't see the alliance, then they don't, they don't know. So they're not going to act on that behavior. So in this case, I have I get four troops for occupying extra territories and Australia. Uh, I like to kind of stick with my fortification strategy. I have a couple of troops here. Uh, and I think what I'll do is I'm going to drop a few into, um, let's go with, I don't know, it's kind of a risk. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. <laughs> it's a risk to go in one place versus the other. I have some time, so let me think. I don't want to show too much hesitancy, but I'm going to go ahead and drop uh, a few into, uh, let's go with, I don't want to grow too big. So I'm going to drop one in here just to demonstrate that I'm going to put a good, uh, defense up in my current territory and then I'm gonna drop the rest of them in here 
And knowing that I'm an ally with Gray, I'm obviously not going to attack him. So let me go ahead and move my troops into uh, this land. We'll see if we win. We're good to go. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and stop here because I got my one territory, which is typically my uh, slow and steady strategy, or I call it turtle strategy, unless I'm playing with different sets of friends and sometimes I just kind of like run through it. Uh, but we'll go ahead and stop the attack. And I'm going to fortify. And I'm going to move these troops up into this region. I'll move two there. And I get my territory card, and then we're good to go. So now it's red player's turn. I'm going to go ahead and try to communicate directly. In this case, I'm going to put my... Uh, I don't have any extra emojis, so I'm gonna put the uh, I'm gonna put the shock face on just to kind of see if I solicit any responses from uh, the other players. So what's fun about this game um, when you're playing over the internet is like you you can team up with other people, you can see the game board. It's very similar to the real life risk. Now, if you're playing with uh, <laughs> friends in real life, uh, which I've I did a lot when I was in high school and college. Uh, <laughs> we would have there'd be direct communications going on. Like I'd be talking, uh, I, I would be talking uh, S A H S H I T. I don't want to. I don't want to say it out loud. I'll spell it. <laughs> um, I would then talk with another friend to see if we can go to one of our other friends into attacking someone else. So there'd be a lot of direct communication going on and indirect communication going on. So. Um, this game is probably going to go on a little longer than I want it to uh, because I obviously I want to get to the concepts. But we'll play this for a few more minutes to see how this goes. Uh, it looks like we have a message from somebody. So hello. Okay. Hopefully you're someone from my class. If not, then welcome to <laughs> the stream. I appreciate you taking the time. It uh, looks like I get a set of troops. So I'm going to go ahead and drop a few more. Actually, I'm going to kind of fortify America because I have troops that haven't done anything. So I'll drop two in this part and I'll drop two over here and part of the strategy is just to make it more difficult to uh, for folks to attack me so I'm gonna drop I'll just stop one here I'm gonna drop one more in there and I'll drop my last one in Africa and I'll go from Africa to Congo a pretty sure bet um, on at least getting a territory and it looks like we're square I'm not gonna go into South Africa because I'm matched or I'm outmatched there and we'll just go ahead and fortify. So again, I'm gonna communicate with the, the group. I'm gonna put the the tears, the laugh face on. Again, trying to see if anyone wants to respond back. It doesn't look like it just yet, um, but we'll keep at it. Oh, I had to end my turn, sorry about that. There we go. So King Jamin's gonna go ahead and have at it. Let's see what happens. He might try to retaliate because I've been slowly picking away at his territories. Uh, he might try to uh, push back. In this case, he's come after me in one part. Uh, taking over a territory makes me a little sad, but he lost a few troops in that process. So uh, it's just kind of how it goes sometimes. So Angry Leprechaun's going to go. And I don't know if he knows where to lie. So I'm just going to go ahead and reach out to a Angry Leprechaun and be like, hey, do you want to make an alliance and see what happens? It looks like he's going after Gray. Uh, and so now uh, Dark dark Gray is going. Let's see what happens. <laughs> he's dropping a ton of troops in uh, South Euro Southern Europe, I believe. And then going from Western Europe, we'll see what happens. So he's not attacking me, which means he's honoring our alliance, which I deeply appreciate. Uh, we'll see how long that lasts. Uh, it's my turn, so I'm going to go ahead and drop... A whole bunch of... I'm kind of trapped here. I'm going to go this way. Drop all my troops. And I'll go ahead and attack. From here to here. Alright, take care of that area. Uh, I think I'll go... Um, I'll go this way. Just kind of clear this up a bit. Uh, can I go that way? No, that's... Oh, kind of. He hasn't responded to my alliance, so I guess I'll just have... No, 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 no. Cancel. Uh, it's too late. I think I made a mistake. Can I go back? Yes. Whew. <laughs> I, I didn't want... I was... I'm, I'm 
closely matched. Okay, we're gonna wrap this up. I don't want to lose that. So White didn't respond to me saying, "Hey, like, <laughs> you're, we'll make an alliance. Um, we'll see what happens in this next round." And so let me just pull up the PowerPoint. We'll see what Red Player does in a moment. So this is just helping demonstrate this idea. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and kind of walk through the real life example now, and I'll pull up this, the other screen as it comes along um, and see what happens. Uh, and see if they team up on me, which they probably are. Uh, actually, red's going after white, I'll pull up the screen. So a real life example of communication. So as you might know, President Joe Biden uh, has this thing called the Build Back Better plan, and it consists of basically two parts, like physical infrastructure, which is roads, highways, bridges, trains, things like that. And that's waiting for a vote in the House of Representatives. So it's sitting there in Congress. Uh, it already passed the Senate. Once it passed the House, it go to the president and become law. The second part of this Build Back Better plan is this human infrastructure bill, which is uh, waiting for a framework in Congress. And you might be asking, what are you talking about? Well, basically, politicians have to decide, you know, whether or not they're going to work together to solve people's regular people's problems. Uh, and there's this debate in Congress uh, amongst within the Democratic Party about how far they should go on the human infrastructure bill. And essentially, there's been some limitations placed on more median or moderate members uh, uh, of the Democratic Party. So we're in this like debate slash conversation now about what's going on. And I'll go ahead and pull up risk back in a few moments because my turn's almost coming around. And um, so what we had was uh, basically Bernie Sanders is on the left end of the Democratic spectrum and Joe Manchin, Senator from West, West Virginia is on the right end of the Democratic spectrum. Um, when you take into account the other party, Joe Manchin's considered a moderate, but within the Democratic Party's view, he would be viewed as a conservative, given his position on a range of things. Now, <clears throat> you might be asking, okay, what's this idea of, of, of communication? Well, uh, what happened last week was Senator Bernie Sanders from Vermont uh, put out uh, a, a, what's called an op editorial, which is basically uh, an, his opinion about an issue. And he published it in a newspaper in West Virginia, which is the home state of Senator Manchin. Uh, and I'll just bring this in because it looks like one of our players was defeated. Uh, and so uh, General Sato, the dark gray player, has defeated the, uh, the white player. And we'll see what he decides to do. He might be on a total uh, rampage. <laughs> we'll figure it out in a few moments. All right, I'm going to let this see what happens here. He may be trying to weigh our alliance because he's taking a little bit more time to think about what he wants to do. Uh, and he's fortifying. So, okay, our honor, our alliance is being honored. Probably not for too many rounds longer because <laughs> he can definitely decide how he wants to play this. So I'm going to go ahead and put all my troops in here. And I'll go ahead and attack from Congo to South Africa to wrap that up. And I'm going to go ahead and fortify. So I'll come back to the PowerPoint. And I pull down the um, the stories. So on the 15th, Senator Bernie Sanders puts out this op-ed saying, let's stand together to protect working families. And he goes and writes about what's happening in the country and uh, his consistent argument about the rich are becoming richer and that we need to have a bill that's very strong in meeting the needs of uh, uh, working class folks across the country. And so this is like in the, you know, a paper in this in Senator Manchin's backyard and he <laughs> and he goes right after Senator Manchin well a couple of days later Manchin fires back at uh, Sanders and he pinned uh, after reading that op-ed and he basically says like hey I get that you know you're you're writing a an op-ed but you know as Joe Manchin is quoted as saying this isn't the first time an out-of-stater has tried to tell West Virginians what is best for them despite having no relationship with our state and so he's having this um He's he's communicating directly back to uh, Senator Sanders. And as I keep going, let me just check the game board. Oh, no, I've been act inactive. Uh, oh, sorry. S oops, forgot to click that through. Anyways, um, so now in this article, Manchin's responding directly back to Sanders. Now, you might think after they antagonize each other that... You know they're not going to talk to each other well a couple days after that they're like you know what let's 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 sit down and have a conversation with each other so here's a picture of senator manchin and senator sanders uh, after they are e exiting the capitol building 
uh, just saying, hey, like we're, we met and we're going to keep meeting. So now instead of having uh, what would be viewed as direct communication through the newspaper, now we see that they're actually having direct communication because they're actually physically talking to one another face to face. That's a lot different than I'm going to write something in your hometown or your home state newspaper and then you're going to read it and then you're going to react to it. So another way of thinking about it is while a direct communication might look uh, like this case, uh, uh, an editorial in a hometown home state newspaper might look like direct communication. It's actually an indirect form of communication because you're using an intermediary in this case, the, the news media or this newspaper to send a message to someone else. And there's a firing back in this case, this was not, uh, this was in the paper. So mansions now using an indirect way of communicating, but in this case, they seem to have resolved that, uh, we're going to talk this out mano a mano face to face and we'll see how it goes. Um, but you'll see essentially that this is the kind of world that we live in. In a game world like this, we can communicate. So in this case, I'm going to drop uh, 10 troops into here. And I have, a f I have a few here. So because I can still attack without oh, trading some cards, sure. I'll drop some more in here. Why not? <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and uh, not keep the peace per se. I'm going to go drop some folks into here. And I'm just going to leave it like that. I want to see who breaks the alliance. That's why I'm like holding out a little bit. All right, let me skip. I can finish my turn. So with this idea of communication, right, we see it in a game where we can talk to other players. We can send emojis. Uh, we can set up alliances. So the alliance would be a direct communication. And those other things would be indirect. And then we see a real life example in politics today where folks will use, politicians will use the media to communicate a message to someone that they serve in the Senate or in the Congress with, but they can ultimately decide whether or not they want to get together to hash things out. Uh, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and finish up playing Risk here for the next few minutes. If you have questions, feel free. You can put them in the chat um, and we'll just see how this game ends here. So, <laughs> all right, looks like red's coming after me. We're, we've been in this battle for quite a while now and I can see him building up his troops in his part of the world. So we'll see what dark player, dark uh, gray does. So he got 10 troops by trading in cards. Now, where is he going to play some? Because where he places them is sending a signal to me. He's communicating with me, I should say, whether his, what his intentions are. So let's wait a few moments. See what happens. Okay, so he dropped a whole bunch of people and a whole bunch more people in Europe. And you might be saying, was oh, that good for me or bad for me? That's probably bad for me. Because <laughs> he's not putting it near red player. Um, oh, he put... Uh, dang, he dropped 40 troops. Or just about. So he's playing the slow game, which is a pretty smart strategy. It's like we're allies, but we're not allies. And I can't turn on him because I we still have player red here who might turn on me. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, draft my troops and I'll put them up here. And then I'll go ahead and attack. Uh, Actually, you know what? Let's just go for the. Let's just go for this. See what happens. Jeez, the ways! I can't believe I crushed it. Okay, I'll go ahead and end my turn. We'll see what happens. So, if you're looking at the map in the broader scale, of things I'm not gonna win this game. Uh, gray, dark, dark gray has almost all of Asia. Has all of Europe. He's collecting tons of cards and putting down he's reinforced his core which is europe and so he's just getting ready for me to come and kind of turn on him uh red is putting up a, a great fight and looks like i'm giving him the space to keep doing that and actually i might just want to because at this point uh dark gray hasn't really helped out too much so he's gonna have to start putting in some uh some troop equity into this process to see how it goes and let's see And we're just about a few minutes out before I have to wrap it up. <coughs> so if any questions, feel free to post them in the chat. <laughs> I 
<laughs> 12 troops in Greenland. Yes, of all places. Alright, he's gone. He's going to town on red. Let's see if he clears the deck here. He should be able to with 20. By the time he gets to that 7, he'll have like 19 troops. Let's see what he does. And the game might be over. Yep, so I'm the last one. And you might be asking, what happens if you have an alliance? <laughs> well, this is the game of global domination. It's not the game of let's work together to take over parts of the world. <laughs> so we'll know how this is gonna end. Me as in the might, I'll make a mighty stand in Australia but we'll probably just leave it at that. So uh, with that, I'm gonna go ahead and leave the emoji saying uh, shock because we know what's happening. And I'm gonna go ahead and say, uh, I can't have, there's no communication. So I'll say well played and I'm gonna go ahead and call it. So with that, thanks for taking the time to listen in. I appreciate it. Uh, we'll go ahead uh, and end the stream. And um, next week we'll talk about uh, w another uh, concept uh, that we're uh, that we're exploring. So uh, thanks for taking the time and have a great night.